So guys, in our last video, we did a marbleized effect on that Scott, Sc uh, Scott Addict RC. Today, we're going to take the next step, we're going to candy that, but before we candy it, we have to seal that marble effect paint with a Interco Clear. So I use House of Colour SG100. Don't know if it's the best, um, haven't got a clue, all I know is it works for me. Um, so we're going to go and do that now and um, hopefully you're going to enjoy watching this happen. So, I've already got the SG100 in the gun. It's not going to change very much. You might see this shine a little bit more. Um, but basically, we're putting a clear coat over the top of this marble effect that you saw me create in the last video. What that's going to do is allow the candy that we go over the top of that to adhere really well. So basically the SG100 will adhere to this material perfectly and then the candy will adhere to the SG100. The candy coat would not adhere to this at all. So you would get peeling issues when you go on to a further stage. You know this bike for example is having gold leaf logos put on it. We'll probably cover that as well. So to stop any problems further down the line, you have to use the right materials as you go along. And the SG100 is the next to go on here. So there you go, and that's our SG100. As you can see, it's a slightly shinier finish. We'll give that some time to go off, and then we'll be able to hit it with the candy color. I'm gonna pause the video now and watch paint dry, as they say. So we're using mainly House of Colour products for our candy work on this Scott. Um, House of Colour comes as a urethane 
coat. It's two part, so you need one part color, one part catalyst. Mix them up. When it's mixed thoroughly, I like to add about 10% thinner. Which is gonna be, sorry about that, battery failure. Like I say, we're new to this, so I'm going to have to excuse the hiccups while we get the hang of filming a bit more seriously. So that's our candy mixed. We then put it through a strainer. It's not a filter, it's a strainer. So I keep getting told by my suppliers. I'm going to always call it a filter. Anyway, we put everything we use through a strainer just to sift out any minute particles of dust that's the wrong lid let's not do that that would have been messy right now we are ready to put some candy on this i'm gonna sit you about there Hopefully, you'll have a good view. I think I hear you saying it's a crap view, isn't it? Let's get you a bit more up close and personal. Right then, that's a bit better, isn't it? So, the way candy works is you have to build the coats up. You can't go too mad, you can't put as much as you'd like to put on in the first go because it just won't it just won't work so we build these coats up slowly and ash who owns this bike he wants the candy to fade out along the chain stays so we're not going to paint the back of the chain stays we start at the front and we just give one light coat at a time. Barely changing the colour. can which is tricky having a camera stuck to your wrist that's it that's our first coat of candy and we're going to do that probably four times working our way a bit further down the chain stays with every coat So we're going to go for our second coat now. I'll change the settings on the camera, live and learn. I'm going to drift a little bit further back along the chain stays with this coat. You can really see the red starting to pop out now. Candy colours by their very nature are translucent. So they rely on what's beneath them to give you their effect. Now, when you're doing something like this, that's great. But if you're just doing a standard candy finish, it can cause some issues for painters because any slight imperfections are gonna show up when the job's finished. So you have to make sure you give yourself the best chance 
that every single coat of paint you put on is just right. You don't want to pick up any bits of dust or any bits of muck or anything like that because with the candy colours they'll never disappear, they're always going to be there. This is why most painters will charge you extra when you have a candy colour done because there's more materials involved and an awful lot more time. So, there's our second coat. You can see now the candy red really starting to show. We've just gone down the chain stays and seat stays a little bit more to help with the fade. I'm going to give that 10 minutes and then we'll give it the third coat. All right, we're ready for our third coat. Don't be afraid to turn your frame upside down, especially when you're doing candy finishes. Look how light the candy red is there. The underside will never get as much candy, no matter how much care you take. So don't be afraid, turn the frame over. And just give the underside quite a heavy lashing. doesn't matter at this stage if you put a bit too much underneath because you're going to do another two coats at least from the top so if you overdo it a little bit underneath now it just means you won't have to flip the frame over after you finish the next two coats so we flip the frame back over very carefully Continue with that third coat. And now you can really see the depth of the candy red starting to build up. Some jobs you can get away with three coats, but I almost always go for four coats of candy, whatever the colour is. Green, blue, red, gold, orange. I just find that when you give it that fourth coat you get the really uniform finish that you need. On this third coat I find it's still a little bit patchy. So that fourth coat is the magic just about enough number. But then you get to the stage where you might want to make the colour even more deep, even richer. So you just add another coat. The more coats you add, the deeper and richer the colour will become. third coat done. We'll give that 10 minutes to go off a little and hit it again. So we're going to go on with the fourth coat now. It might be the final coat but we'll make a call on that once it's done.
that's got the fade to where I want it to be on these rear stays. go on this candy color now is a catalyst paint so it's gradually going off I've given it half an hour and uh, I need to go over it with some clear lacquer because we're gonna sand this back tomorrow ready for its logos we can't sand the candy color back because if we sand it it'll go patchy because we'll be sanding color off so basically what we have to do is we have to put a nice coat of clear lacquer over the top that gives us a sacrificial coat of paint to sand back into, which will give us a perfectly smooth surface ready for our logos to go on it. Like I said to you a bit earlier in this clip, this one is having uh, gold leaf logos, which I'll probably film. We don't do it very often, so it'd be a good opportunity to show you. Um, so I'm gonna put you over there because there's just too much going on on my wrists and you can have a watch and see how quickly these things can be lacquered. Right, lacquer time.
there you go it's had its lacquer so i'm going to give this three good coats of lacquer see the depth of shine now and then after it's had those three coats of lacquer we'll give it 24 hours and then it'll get flattened back ready for the next stage I'll film the next stage for you.